Good morning. Welcome to Tara at Home. I'm here with Colleen Zimmerman from Tara, and um, we are talking roses, yes. which most people just love and adore and love the, the fragrance, but they can be a little high maintenance. So you have a solution. Yes, we do. Okay. One of the newest uh, types of roses out are the knockout roses. Okay, knockout roses. Yes, <laughs> and they are knockouts for sure. Mm -hmm. um, the nice thing about these is that they're really, really hardy, low maintenance, and they flower from spring right into till frost. Okay, so people love that. that th those are all key, right? Especially with some people so busy these days. And uh, we were just talking about the fact that uh, we had a really hard winter, which was hard on so many different elements around us. But uh, even roses, you were saying, uh, roses really suffered if you didn't do the right steps in the fall? Yes, uh, traditional roses, usually they're grafted onto a rootstock and you have to hill them in the winter to protect that rootstock and I myself forgot to do that and, and what does that mean exactly hilling is when you take extra soil from around the area or mm -hmm. add to it and just hill it up, literally hill it up hill so it's like a little hill around the base of your rose mm -hmm. and it that helps insulate and protect where that graft spot is mm -hmm. where they basically connect okay. two plants together okay but but I forgot and because it was so cold for so long mm -hmm. and roses kind of have a tendency to be finicky at the best of times, sure. there's a lot of roses that didn't make didn't it through make the winter. It, right. So they were too exposed and um, and they're they're suffering now. You're looking yes. and you're like, uh oh. Yes. <laughs> Where are my roses? So these guys are pretty hardy and as you say, low maintenance and do they have their nice smell? They do have fragrance oh, to they them. Do. They do. Yes, they do. And some beautiful colors. There are some beautiful colors. There's red, there's pink, there is a yellow variety as well. Oh wow. Um, and then there's also single and doubles. Okay. So the singles give you kind of that English country rambling rose sort yes. of look to it. Yes. And then if you're more of a traditional rose person, there is mm -hmm. the double knockout. So okay. it looks almost just like a little miniature rose. Okay. So uh, key time to be planting these? Best in early summer, mm -hmm. uh, spring and early summer. Okay. And um, use a fertilizer when you transplant them, mm -hmm. just like anything else. Mm -hmm. And then they like a little extra fertilizer just to keep them growing. Okay. So how often? Depending on what you use, because there are slow release, so you can use right. like a granular. So depending on the granular, then that slow release, you know, usually once a month. Okay. Or you can use a liquid if you're a little bit more religious and you want to watch your roses. Then you right. know, it's usually once a week, once every other week. And that really gives lots of blooms, and yes. and, uh, and you can just tell it really gives them some good hardiness, yes. right? They just they really flourish from that. Yeah. And, and that's the thing. There are so many different options with fertilizers, oh, sure. as you say these days. So you really have to maybe ask some questions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the great thing about these roses, they were developed in the States, okay. so they're developed for our climate, so they're extremely hardy. They're, they are classified as a shrub rose, so okay. it's about three to four feet wide and three to four feet tall. Okay. So they don't get huge, right. they're great for smaller gardens as mm -hmm. well. And they just kind of bush out, fill out. Some of them have great leaf color too. I was like gonna say this has, is beautiful with yeah. this nice, really like so reddish get a little bit of reddish leaf and, to yep. them, and mm -hmm. then you top that with a rose flower. It's just great. Mm -hmm. And the mm -hmm. one nice thing about these, most people associate roses with like black spot and diseases and aphids yes. and all that kind of stuff. That's, that was gonna be my next question. Yes, so. these ones are disease resistant and they are insect resistant. And is that again more because they've been developed for yes. the North American climate? Yeah, huh. more in the breeding of them to make them hardier, right. to make them fuller, to make them bloom longer. Hmm. Basically all the things you like about roses, they just do that. Okay, so in, in terms of, you know, we were saying that they're low maintenance, but how often do you have to be out there? Do you have to be out there pruning? In the spring. Just that? That's it. You don't have to deadhead right. them. They'll keep blooming if you don't deadhead really? them. You can take off the spent blooms if sure. you want just for the looks of it. Right. But you don't have to deadhead them. They'll just kind of keep blooming on their own. And just in the spring, you cut them, cut them back hard. Okay. And then they'll just push right out. So it's super easy. Yeah. Like anybody can have an English rose garden with these. That's great. Yeah. And, that, and again, that's it. Really, is hard people. People love to, you know, to go to certain gardens and admire roses. But it really, they really are afraid. And you know, a lot of times too, if you if you don't touch a, if you don't touch a, the average rose garden and you leave, it just starts to go all out of control, right? Exactly. So you've got random branches just shooting like shooting out everywhere, and it. It's just there's no rhyme or reason to it, and sometimes yeah, you just gotta cut it right yeah. back to start again. Yeah, and these again. ones stay neat and tidy, like you can see in this plant here. I was gonna say this one is a really good one to show, actually, because look at how nice and just tight like that is. The whole form of it is just really nice. It's beautiful, and it, you can see like there's buds coming on every single one of yes. these ends, and it's just gonna get loaded with blooms. This is great, and as you say, they're still getting it to a decent size, mm -hmm. but it's it's something that's workable with exactly. uh, a person's controlled garden. size. It's not gonna you know go to eight feet tall and right. ten feet wide. Right. Now we were talking. Um, on last episode about uh, your five top perennials. How, you know, can these work well with other perennials in the garden? Are they gonna fight? Are they need their own space? Or? No, these like a lot of sun. The more sun you give them, the better bloom you're gonna get. Okay. And you can plant them singly, like some people like to have a rose garden. Yes. 
However, yes. these work really well as a like as a hedge. Okay. Or in a grouping, just like you would any other flowering shrub. Mm -hmm. Or you can include you know one or two with your perennial garden, mm -hmm. but just in combination with things, they look just stunning. Mm -hmm. I like that. I like that a lot. And that's and again, it's just it gives us another option of uh, a beautiful color. And I like that the fact that you know you said you use even yellow. Yes. So it uh, it gives people just something else to look forward to. Maybe I can grow roses. <laughs> Right? I think you can. Yeah? Yes, yeah, I do. Uh, everything you show me, I'm like, okay, so now, I got to put this in my garden. I just need you to come to my garden because uh, <laughs> you just know this stuff. This is just so good. But it's really great, and they're just so beautiful. And um, you notice, I notice, obviously, they have thorns, but they seem pretty reasonable. Yeah, they're, they're not. Soft. Like, some of the thorns on, like, some of your hybrid teas are wicked. So oh, yeah. these ones, there's not as many thorns. Yes. And they don't tend to be quite as, you know, right. nasty. Right. No, they seem to be, like, a little bit soft. Yeah. And, of course, you know, when you, uh, you do have children like we do, <laughs> and the ball goes in there, you know, uh -huh. You don't want them coming out all hacked up, right? So yeah. And the nice thing too is like they do get long enough stems that you could use them as cut flowers still to bring okay, them in. Okay, yeah, that's that's right. I've just noticed that actually with some of these, they're beautiful, yes. right? You could do that. Oh, and they look so beautiful and just a little, a little vase inside it's your house. Bouquet. And again, something that uh, you know your your neighbors will be will be jealous of. So you can give them a little bouquet on their own. So very key um, to make sure you try to plant them sooner than later at this point. Yep. And I make sure that you do fertilize, right? Just as with any. Yep. Yeah, you really? want to fertilize them when you plant them with a transplant fertilizer that gets mm -hmm. the roots going okay. that they need to establish mm -hmm. and then just follow up after that with some food because anything that blooms a lot like mm -hmm. these do, mm -hmm. they're heavy feeders so you just, you know, mm -hmm. well, I want to have some bone meal here as well. Yes, bone meal is great. It's an, a natural option okay. that you can use and again, it is slow release to the plant as well mm -hmm. but um, the nice thing about it, when you're looking for any fertilizer for roses, you want to look for a higher middle number. Okay. Or a higher, and a little bit of higher first number. Okay, the so that's when you're referring to these numbers yes, here, right? Yes, the numbers in the front there. Uh -huh. The high mid higher middle number is good for root growth as well as flower growth, because if you have good root system, you're going to have good flowers. Okay, okay, so that's good. That's good to know, because a lot of times people aren't even sure what that number means, right? But again, that's the great part, is you know, you can come in here and talk to you guys and, and sure, really we'll set yourselves you. up, because they know, like, some people know some elements of their garden, and then they start getting, and maybe they're only just plant annuals all the time and aren't used to perennials and, and are worried they're going to have this overgrown backyard, but but, uh, you know, or again, worried about disease or different types of things. And I think it's great to try stuff new, especially things like this that come back. Because if you are used to annuals because you know them, yes. they take a lot of time. They do. And that's actually a really valid point because I've always been, you know, I was always so stuck in annuals years ago. But really, it is kind of nice because they do become lower maintenance mm -hmm. when you have some, some of these perennials like this where uh, you're just standing there like, oh, yeah, it's that time of year. And here they come yep. and they're doing their thing. and. Easy. Yep, and combining the perennials with shrubs like a shrub rose. Yes. Because these take up more space, so you don't need as many. Right. Right. Exactly. That's good too. Oh, you're you're good at this stuff. All right. <laughs> thanks, Colleen. Great stuff. All right, we're gonna be back with more tarot home right after this. When I dream, I dream in color. When I think of color, I think of Tara. Make your dreams come true at Terra, where color lives. You've sat under them and built forts in them. You've swung from them and fell out of them. You've even fallen in love under them. Trees have always held a special place in our hearts and memories. A natural beauty, trees will grow with you and your family and bring color and nature into your world. For your assurance of quality, look for trees and shrubs with the Medallion Plant Tag. Medallion Plants, locally grown, the pride of Niagara. The Hamilton Spectator, at work, at home, or on the go. Read us online, in print, or download us to your e-reader. Get the Hamilton Spectator any way you want it. Good morning, welcome back to Terra at Home. I'm here with Katie Rachel Walker, and we were talking about your cute little company that you've come up with, based on, you know, the, of course, the help from your cat, mm -hmm. Philip's Ice Pops. Yeah, he's my mascot, <laughs> Philip. <laughs> That's so cute. All right, so how did this whole company come to be for you? Um, well, I 
just I didn't have the intention of starting a business at all when I mm -hmm. started. I was just making ice pops at home with my ice pop mold that I had bought in St. Lawrence Market in mm -hmm. Toronto. Mm -hmm. um, and I started experimenting with different flavors, different combinations with uh, seasonal fruit and herbs and gave them to friends good. and family and it just started to in a business from there. Yeah, and it's so funny how that happens to so many people where, you know, you just you start doing something that you just enjoy doing and people love the idea and love that you've been creative with it and uh, all of a sudden it uh, becomes like a sort of an ice pop mecca for you, right? Yeah. So this just started last summer for you? It did. It started mm -hmm. last summer in Kensington Market mm -hmm. and now this year I'm branching out to Hamilton, Burlington and Oakville. Mm -hmm. And you're and it's a mobile cart. Yes, mm -hmm. I sell to stores as well as having a mobile cart. Okay. So it's my Philip Ice Pops tricycle. Mm -hmm. um, there's two wheels in the front and a wheel in the back, and I have my freezer in the front. Sort of like traditional, like when we were kids, and you have a little. Yeah. Do you have like a bell? Yeah, I do, and a little <laughs> pink radio too. Oh, that's awesome! Yeah. <laughs> so I, I sell it. at events and mm -hmm. also just throughout the street. Mm -hmm. I uh, tell people on Twitter where I'm gonna, going to be, mm -hmm. um, whether it's an art crawl or. Uh, Sound of Music Festival in Burlington, mm -hmm. or concerts in Toronto. That's the thing. There are so many options, and again, you knew, and you have to take and enjoy, you know, the hot weather while you have it, and mm -hmm. get out there, right? Of and uh, and being in our area where it's all about food trucks, and uh, and it's just, just so easily accessible, and just going around, and 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 again with the social media, it just makes it so much easier for you to, for people to get the word out, right? Yeah, it to does. Everybody. And like I was saying, I alert everyone on Twitter a few mm -hmm. hours before an event, mm -hmm. so people can keep updated. That's fun, right? Yeah, and I'm at. Phillips Ice Pops on uh, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. That's awesome. You yeah. have to you have to hold on to social media these days for yeah. these things. Okay, so let's talk about your ice pops and some of the flavors that uh, that you've come up with. Uh, so right here, these are all the three of my flagship flavors. Mm -hmm. This is a strawberry basil flavor. Mm -hmm. This is watermelon, lime, and sea salt. And the most refreshing of the flavors is uh, lemon, ginger, and rosemary. So I guess you'd have to kind of really play around a little bit just to achieve that perfect balance, um, especially when you're using some herbs in that as well, right? So mm -hmm. uh, you want them to be, you know, just have uh, sweet enough, yeah. right? But not too overly sweet, right? Because yeah. we can get that anywhere, right? In stores exactly. and, you know, and full of artificial flavors and all mm -hmm. those other things. But these are all natural. Yes, these are all natural. I use organic cane sugar, mm -hmm. um, no high fructose corn syrup, preservative free. Mm -hmm. um, and what I do, uh, for instance, this flavor mm -hmm. with the rosemary, I infuse it in a simple syrup. Um, so it's very simple, honest ingredient. Mm -hmm. And that's right. So you're getting more the flavoring pulling from the rosemary mm -hmm. leaves, and uh, and then that's way it's all infused in with it. And I love the idea that you've used um, ginger as well. Yeah. So that gives it a sort gives of a, it a little nice, spice. Yes, I guess it would. Right. Yeah. So this is what's great is that they're kind of like adult ice pops, but kids love them too. Yeah. So everybody's sort of. You know, it's not just your average. Yeah, thing. kids love the strawberry and basil flavor because mm -hmm. the basil is just very minor in it; it just sure. lifts the flavor up. Okay. So I find a lot of kids mm -hmm. get a little, a little more inventive with yeah. their flavor choices. Okay. So and again, you know, I'm sure people give you lots of suggestions of flavor profiles that yeah. would be good for your ice pops. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All the time, I always get feedback from my mm -hmm. customers, which is great. Yes. And um, I do change the flavors with the season. So for certain events, I'll have a peach and ginger flavor when it is in season in the late summer. Mm -hmm. Also, um, a blueberry mint flavor I throw in there. Oh, that would be good. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so, I mean, some of the big, you know, thoughts that I would have, and we, we talked a little about this before, is that you could actually make ones with alcohol. Yes. So, I'm alcoholic ice pops. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm actually doing a collaboration with Kensington Brewery mm -hmm. and making a beer pop, ice pop. Mm -hmm. um, with watermelon, their watermelon wheat flavor. So I'm just making wow. it a little sweeter, more refreshing. I can't even imagine. So you would have to add a little bit of sugar to that, I take it, to yes. sweeten it up yep, a little just, bit. Yeah, um, just simple syrup yeah. and um, some citrus as well. I try to use more citrus to mm -hmm. lift the flavor rather than overbearing with sugar. It's probably kind of fun, right, because you can sort of... Um, you know, get creative with it and really start to start thinking outside of the box, especially with adding herbs in that as well, just kind of like cocktails, a little yeah. cocktail trend of, of adding herbs. But I'm sure there's certain things that you've tasted before and you're like, you know what, I can make an ice pop out of this. Exactly. Right? I do it all the time, yeah. especially with this flavor right here. Mm -hmm. The flavor was actually inspired from a Mexican, their Mexican uh, way of eating watermelon with mm -hmm. a little bit of sea salt on top. That's neat. So it almost tastes like a margarita. And I wouldn't even have, yeah, I wouldn't even have thought of ever putting salt on watermelon. Yeah. Yeah, before, it just figure, enhances right? it. It doesn't really make it salty, then it right. just boosts it. Yeah, so I, yeah, yeah. Like, I guess kind of like, you know, people put it on tomatoes, right, to enhance the flavor as well, mm -hmm. right? Okay, so you actually have uh, your, your blend here of uh, 
This one. Now, which one's your top, top, top selling flavor? It really depends. Depends on the, depends event. On the region. Yeah, <laughs> really? the region in Toronto. Uh, yeah, it depends if it's more adult based or more mm -hmm. kid based. Sure. This I would say is my top. Yes. Children flavor and sure. this adults love because it's a little more sophisticated. Mm -hmm. um, so to go in how I make this, mm -hmm. um, it's actually very easy to make at home. Mm -hmm. uh, it just takes a few steps, very honest and simple. Um, so I cut the lemon in half and ream the lemon juice out. Um, and take away all the pulp and then with the sugar, I do half water, half sugar mm -hmm. um, and just infuse the rosemary in the simple syrup okay. and then add the ginger in as well. And then now how do you add to the ginger because um, again it's all, are, do, you, do you boil it down? Or yeah, I find the best the way that I do it is mm -hmm. I juice the ginger. So if you have a, a juicer at home, mm -hmm. if you don't have a juicer at home you can add it into the simple syrup. Okay. Um, just cut it up in pieces and sure. you'll just get that hint of flavor. Right, and that's what you're saying that um, you found instead of uh, and using the pulp from a lot of these fruits, it's better to juice them. Yeah, and the consistency. <laughs> yeah, the consistency mm -hmm. is a lot better, I find, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. freezes a lot better. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, so basically, at home, easy enough to make. And I know that we actually sell ice molds here to mm -hmm. make ice pops. <laughs> this Tara, is the most so ice here. you can experiment with your kids. So yeah, you have you have one like this. So it's the same thing. Just mm. pour them in, let them freeze. Roughly, how long are you letting these freeze for? I would say about five to six hours. Okay. All right. Yeah. So don't get your kids too excited. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> it does take some time, and that's the thing that we have to remember. Yeah. But um, again, just experiment. And again, because you are dealing with natural flavors, and you can just do so much. You don't have to worry about kids being all jacked up on really high, again, high fructose sugars exactly. and and uh, and dyes and things like that. But of course, the best part is to find out where you're going to be this summer yeah. and uh, and to make sure to hook up with you and to and to try one out. And of course, as you said, you're going to be following sort of the fresh fruit that's coming out for the season. So mm -hmm. yeah, going all kinds with the Ontario of harvest schedule options and fun things to do. Yeah. Well, we loved having you on the show. Thanks and for uh, me. again, it really is. I mean, it takes you back to being a kid, and especially seeing you riding around on your little uh, yeah. three uh, three. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be so, so fun. Yeah. So are you going to be hanging around some of the food trucks and stuff as well? I will summer? be, yeah. yes, yes. Okay, good. Yes. So we'll have to try to catch her, right? Yeah, on Twitter. <laughs> Find me on Twitter yeah. and I will let everyone know all the events we'll be at. All right. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Katie. Really good stuff. And I'm just going to give this a little smell because mm, that smells awesome. I'll have to figure out which one I'm going to try. <laughs> yeah. Nice to have you on the show. Thanks That's for it for now. Me. More chair at home after this. When I dream, I dream in color. When I think of color, I think of Tara. Make your dreams come true at Terra, where color lives. Heritage Perennials, look for us in the blue pots. Good morning, welcome back to Terra at Home. I'm here with Chef Mark from La Piazza Allegra restaurant in Hamilton. And uh, we have the showers coming down today. <laughs> Hopefully by the time you watch this, it's, uh, it's not uh, raining like this, but yeah. um, you know what? Father's Day weekend, and What's we want to put together a good dish for Dad. Something hearty, something something big, yeah. something robust. Uh, th this is what we're <laughs> looking for. Meat. That's right. <laughs> so what we have here is we have some pork rib chops. Now the beauty is when you you have a butcher that you work with, you can go in and ask him to cut them any way you want. So I right. went down to my butcher and asked him to give me an inch and three quarter cut rib chops. So Look this is those. what he did. And you know what? It's a fantastic, awesome. when you have somebody that can do that for you, it's just, oh, yeah, it makes easy. life easy because, you know, you want to do something like this, you can't always, you have to have the right thickness of cut yes. to stuff it. Yes. So what we're looking cut. to do today is we're going to take it, we're going to stuff bacon, 
aged. Like stuff in, stuff in more <laughs> That's meat. right, double protein. <laughs> we have an aged, extra old um, cheddar. Oh my goodness. And then we have uh, leek. And we're okay. going to put all that inside these wow. rib chops. So I've cooked off some bacon, but I think we're going to put a little bit more into these ones. So okay. Now this is going to be done. I'm going to be doing this on a pan, but mm -hmm. it can be done on the grill as well. Okay. And I'll tell you the only difference that you would do once we get to that point. Well, that's the thing because sometimes, you know, some people grill all year round. Doesn't matter. Even after mm -hmm. the winter we had, or you know, this past year. But um, it, when you really get into grilling season, some people literally like to grill every day. So they always try yeah. to find a way of how can I do this on the grill too, or can I, right? Exactly. So this one here, it, it worked really well on any any charcoal grill, anything like that. Mm -hmm. um, you can do it in the pan if you, you know, you end up with a rainy day and you don't want mm -hmm. to be outside. It does work. Right. Now what we're going to do is we're going to cook the bacon in this pan. If you were doing this in the barbecue, you cook the pan, the bacon mm -hmm. in the pan, yep. save the bacon fat. Because when you're on the barbecue and you're pretty close to being done, that's what you're going to brush onto the pork chops. But The bacon fat. The bacon fat, that's <laughs> right. Oh my goodness. Now I've cut some leeks and all I'm doing is I'm going to hold them and I'm going to put them in some water. Okay, mm -hmm. this is boiled water. Okay. All I'm doing is softening it up. Okay. Because you don't want the raw leek. Let that go a minute or two. Mm -hmm. and while that's happening, I'm going to take my pork chop, and you have that nice thick bone on this end. That so is a beautiful looking pork chop, I must say. It is a beautiful chop. And you take wow. a knife, and we're going to put a nice good pocket into this. Okay. Turn the knife so that when you're going through, you're going to turn the knife so that you end up with the pocket on the inside. You don't end up with a really wide opening at right. the, at the okay. one end. So there's the one. We're going to do the same with this one. The sharp knife would really come in handy at this point. It <laughs> Make does. Make your job a little easier. It does. You have to have a sharp knife. Mm -hmm. And again, turn the knife. Okay. Now, and take these leaks out. All right. And like I said, all I want to do is soften them up a little bit. Because you don't want that raw, it's same thing with see, the bacon. Yes. You don't want the raw bacon in there because it, you don't have to overcook pork. That's right. the beauty about it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, finally, the um, American Food and Drug Administration says that you can eat pork medium, which every yes. chef has known for years. Right. But now we actually got an official stamp You've on this one. You've got to be able to say that. And that's the great thing because we know that you can overcook pork and it's that's not good. Right. It's very, it's very not. tough. So when you're able to cook it, I always say in a restaurant, well, how would the chef like, it, like to prepare it? Because then we know you're cooking it like how it should be done. That's right. And what you know is the most optimum for the meat, right? right? So you're just shoving pieces of cheddar in there. Just put the <laughs> cheddar right in there. And I'm putting the cheddar in first so that when it melts, it doesn't all run out. Okay. Okay? It stays oh, to yeah. the inside. These little tiny little tips that, you know what, it comes from experience. And it's uh, people at home would learn if they did the other way <laughs> pretty quickly. <laughs> We're going to take our leek. And also, it being softer, it's easier to work with, It too, is right? easier to work with. And again, you're going to put that straight inside. Mm -hmm. Wow. And then we're going to take the bacon that we've cooked. Now, if it is, see this one here, I didn't open it up. If it's a little tight, don't be yeah. afraid to make it a little bit wider. Okay. There's mm -hmm. no point in struggling with it. Yeah. So we put that in there. Now, you say at least you also don't have to worry about the inside trying to cook things on the inside because everything's already cooked. So. Everything's already cooked. The mm -hmm. bacon's cooked. The leeks are already partially cooked. Now I'm going to take this out. Now you would let this cool. And that's why I've done this over here. Oh, to have you're it ahead so of time. <laughs> so I, I learned that lesson. I know you have strong, like your <laughs> fingers are probably so resilient to heat, but that's a little bit much. That, that bacon fat, that's a little tough. <laughs> that one, that one uh, stings. <laughs> and we're going to put the bacon in there as well. So I did a couple pieces per chop. Okay. You, can do, you can do more if you need. And we always know that bacon gives flavor to so much, which it is does. why we're using bacon fat to flavor. It just it adds such a flavor and element, and you, you've seen it a lot more. It's more, I guess, prevalent now. People hear about it more of using bacon fat for cooking French fries for whatever, right? So, right. well, you know what? Fat. It's a it's a natural fat that everybody your body understands how to break it down, which mm -hmm. is nice. Yeah. So why not use it? Right. And we'll put both chops in. Look at that. <laughs> We're going to salt it. Now, if you're doing this on the barbecue, what you'd want to do is you want to heat up your barbecue, mm -hmm. take a cloth and a little bit of oil and just rub it down. Okay. okay get some nice grill marks on that. Mm -hmm. um, and then lower it down because you do want to cook it at a fairly 
low to medium heat. You don't okay. want it over high because there is a lot of fat content in the rib chop. Right. So you'll get a lot, a lot of flare-ups flare -ups and stuff, stuff okay. like that. So okay. that avoids doing that mm -hmm. or having that problem. So now, are you going to put these in the oven at all? As these well, ones, then? yeah, they yes. have to go into the oven because I, we don't have the luxury of keeping them on the grill the whole time. Yes. And what will happen is this won't cook properly on the stove. So. Okay. Okay, I didn't think so. You're not going to be able to achieve no. that by, by having it in a pan. So we're just going to brown both sides, okay. and then after that, I'm going to put it in the oven. Mm -hmm. Now, I put it in the oven with um, at about 450 on a broil. On a broil. Okay. okay. So you got to keep your so eye on it. You do have to keep your eye on it, but I do want to do it in a quicker temperature in the oven so that it seals everything in. Right. And so how long are you roughly you leaving it in there? Uh, for the ones about this size, you're looking at about 15 minutes of each. 15 oh, to 20 minutes bad, depending though. on yeah it's not too bad because you've done again you've done the nice browning and given it some right. good flavor here but it'll continue to look like amazing no oh, beautiful so again salt and pepper both sides yes because it is a thick chop if okay. it was a very thin one and you wouldn't be able to stuff it but right. you're using thinner pork you wouldn't be able to salt both sides would be too much but okay. because they're so thick all right so what we'll do is we are going to take it from this stage we're going to put it in the oven and we're going to come back and show you the final product we'll be right back when i dream i dream in color when I think of color, I think of Tara. Make your dreams come true at Tara, where color lives. You've sat under them and built forts in them. You've swung from them and fell out of them. You've even fallen in love under them. Trees have always held a special place in our hearts and memories. A natural beauty, trees will grow with you and your family and bring color and nature into your world. For your assurance of quality, look for trees and shrubs with the Medallion Plant Tag. Medallion Plants, locally grown, the pride of Niagara. Welcome back to Tara at Home. We're back with Chef Mark, and we're finishing up these beautiful, giant, yeah. stuffed pork chops that you've done. Perfect thing. Again, you can just throw these together tomorrow for Father's Day for uh, for Dad or Grandpa, yeah. and uh, look how lovely they look. So, again, just to remind people that uh, you did pan sear them first. Pan sear them, yeah, and then uh, finish them in the oven for about. It took about 15 minutes because okay. of the thickness of these. Yes. Um, but like I said, if you were to do this on the barbecue, just do it on low, medium heat. Mm -hmm. Retain all that bacon fat, and then this will be the point where you start brushing that bacon fat on and just finish it off oh, on the barbecue. Oh my goodness. So what I'll do here is I'll take this one and we'll cut it. We'll okay. take a look down the middle. All right, just so you can kind of get an example of what. So my dad would be very happy with just that, given to him on a plate. But if we talk about maybe some accompaniments as well for other than just a big there side of go. meat. Look at that, that's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> what else would you put with it? You know what? I love potatoes and pork. I just think they go ah, hand in hand. Good. Um, so if you were going to do it on the barbecue, you can do a, a little bit thicker than what you would do for a scallop, maybe about a quarter inch cut. You just Ooh. rub it in oil and just do a light grill on that. Ooh. You can, you know, rounds That's with that. Great idea. Um, of course, you know, at this time of the year, you got all those vegetables in season. So any grilled vegetables, zucchini, peppers, yeah. all that stuff. I, I, you're going to grill, I say grill the entire meal outside. Perfect. If you're going to come indoors, then you can start fiddling with some sure. other things because, of course, pork and cabbage goes well as well. Yeah, exactly. So, um, you know, that's the great thing about, uh, again, having that ability to go outside and grill, as you say. You mm -hmm. Now, if you, it just takes practice and it gets, it, and just takes some timing, but do it all out there. Do it all and out there. And it's all about summer and we have that's such a short, right. short season. Exactly. So just enjoy this. <laughs> enjoy that is amazing. Outdoors. I love that recipe. You can, again, you can always find recipes on our website at terragreenhouses.com. So again, one of many of the great uh, items that you've been making for us, and we Thank have more you. to come. Thank so you. stay tuned and have yourself a great Father's Day weekend. Thanks, Mark. Thank you.